all right. Hey folks, it's Faz from Faz Lifts. And in today's video, I would like to talk about overhead work for triceps. And there is a current push for doing overhead tricep extension work to prioritize a long head. I want to push back against that a little bit. I am not convinced by the current push for overhead work for building the long head of the triceps. In fact, I would say not only am I unconvinced, I think it's wrong. So let's talk about that. And I think like the answer for most things, we have to understand there is a nuance. And I want to explain today where I feel we're misdirected in our push, because I think there's a bit of right on both sides. So first of all, I just want to include a brief point about the role of science in hypertrophy research. So hypertrophy research is still a very new field. And really, the, um, the inception of hypertrophy research, specifically hypertrophy research and not strength research, we can probably date back to about 2010, when uh, Wormbaum did his original study on looking at specifically hypertrophy. That was really the beginnings of tying together what we know of hypertrophy research. And since then, Brad Schoenfeld has done a fantastic job of spearheading that research, and he's, he's created some amazing general guidelines. There have also been occasions over the last 10, 15 years where hypertrophy research has misled us. And as a whole, the community tends to go very gung-ho towards these things, which is what I'm cautioning us against now. So two things. Hypertrophy research is still a very new field, and it's susceptible to outcome errors. And one clear example I can give of that is frequency. Frequency was completely misunderstood when the research originally came out. Now we know frequency has a much closer relationship to overall volume, and that's what should actually influence your frequency rather than just frequency out and out. So the picture was not complete. It was like seeing a jigsaw where it was a quarter of the way built and thinking that the outcome was going to be different to what it actually is when we see the entire picture. So the next thing is we, as the sort of natural YouTube bodybuilding community, we are not immune to the influence of science and depending on you know whether it's right or wrong, we are not immune from it. And I would say pretty much everyone in the YouTube community five or 10 years ago were making the same mistakes about frequency and have since reneged what they've said and are now having a more updated view. So we are not immune to flaws from the research which come in and seep in and make our thinking, um, take our thinking in the wrong direction, away from things that we know actually work. And that's what I want to hold a precautionary sort of flag up for and emphasize that actually we may be getting a little bit carried away here and I don't think we're seeing the full picture and I want to make an argument for why. So that's the first thing. Now, next, <clears throat> this is the, the argument that's being um, pushed at the moment by a lot of prominent natural bodybuilders. And firstly, before I say this, I want to express just the level of respect I have for these guys um, because I, I like a lot of these guys. I've talked about them before. Um, and all of the people who have currently been pushing overhead tricep work to target the long head, I have utmost respect for them. So it's not one of those drama videos. I'm not a drama channel. But currently, there is a strong push and this sort of acceptance that doing overhead tricep work to target the long head is vital. It is mandatory almost, to the point where some people have completely omitted other tricep work in favor of doing everything overhead. Now, <clears throat> the long head of the tricep is the bulk of the tricep. That is the largest of the three tricep muscles. It's the one which accounts for the majority of the hang in a front double bicep. It's the majority of what you see from the side the only time that you really don't see the long head is really head on. Okay, if you're just standing relaxed, that's when you see more of the of the outer head here. So that's the long head. And generally right now, there's a push towards doing overhead work to work to target that long head with this idea being that um, push downs and things where your arms are at your side, tar even, even pressing, pressing and dips, target more of the outer head there rather than the long head, which is the bulk of the tricep. 
So that's the current sort of stance and push, just so we are all up to speed. Now, my problem with that is, just ignoring all the, the science right now, ignoring everything, ignoring the current push, my problem with that is, that is not what has traditionally been used to build the biggest arms of all time. It's, it's the opposite. Like traditionally, the best um, sort of um, builders aren't overhead type work. Now, overhead type work is like examples like this. Every, every everywhere you put your triceps in a stretch position at the lat, okay? So things like overhead, dumbbell, barbell, cable, machine tricep extensions, things like a skull over or a PJR pullover, where your triceps are stretched at the lat. Any exercise where the triceps are in a stretch position at the upper back insertion. You could also include overhead work and actually upper back pulling work in that or two because the tricep does influence, um, does get worked during overhead work, sort of overhead pushing and uh, upper back pulling. So those are the traditional overhead type of exercises that are being pushed now as tricep builders for the long head. So going back to what I was saying, um, I'm not convinced by that because traditionally speaking, those weren't considered and aren't considered to be the big tricep builders. So the big, great tricep builders, which have built the largest arms over time, have been the close grip bench, weighted dips, skull crushers, cable pushdowns, all of which have your arms firmly by your side. None of these traditional bicep uh, tricep builders, which bodybuilders and powerlifters have used for generations to build huge triceps, none of those are with your arms overhead. So what is going on? Like, we have this current push of, for overhead work, but it doesn't match with what we anecdotally know, anecdotally know to be true, which is that the traditional bulk builders are the close grip bench, weighted dips, skull crushers, cable pushdowns. These are all traditional tricep exercises. When you think triceps, you think these exercises. None of these place the tricep in a stretch position at the upper back. So that's the first thing. It doesn't match. It's, it was the same way with um, frequency sort of eight years ago. Everybody was pushing for higher and higher frequency because of muscle protein synthesis, because of these research articles which pointed at higher frequency to maintain a high level of muscle protein synthesis, which is fine because it did. But then we realized that's not the complete picture at all. And you need a reasonable amount of per session volume to ensure the, 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 the session is useful. So I think in the same way, we're missing something because it doesn't match what we've traditionally known to be true. So people with frequency were starting to train their body parts four, five, six days, days a week. Actually, traditionally speaking, that's not what's been getting the best results for the majority of people. And so now we know frequency is much more closely tied to your overall volume of the session, which is tied to your weekly volume. And I think that's one of the things that's going on here. We don't have the full picture. So what we're pushing doesn't match what we know to be true anecdotally for decades and generations. And anytime that happens, you have to stop and question what you're saying. So, next. How do we effectively marry these things together? Because I don't like to out and out say, look, these people are wrong, because the people I'm talking about are very, very respectable members who, of the community who I speak to on a regular basis. Um, so I don't want to out and out say people are wrong because I'm not going to say your experience is wrong. So I don't want to say that. So how do we marry the two together? Like, how do we marry this together? If you're telling me you've been getting better results by going exclusively overhead, cool. Like, I believe that. But I would also say from my experience, overhead work made zero difference to my tricep development. In fact, I did zero overhead work when I was a powerlifter. Zero. I barely overhead pressed, actually, and it was mostly just regular pressing, close grip benching, dips. Those are my predominant builders. Always it was flat benching work or incline benching work, but always at a low angle, nothing overhead. So I hardly ever placed my triceps in a stretch position. And I know that when I started bodybuilding, I was as strong on overhead tricep work as I was on lying tricep work. 
I was capable of doing a 60 kilo overhead tricep extension and I could do 60 kilos on a skull crusher. Made absolutely zero difference. In fact, from all those years of close grip benching and dips and benching and feet up benching, my long head was disproportionately larger than my other heads of my tricep. My triceps view from the front have never been that impressive. They, I don't have that curve from the front, but I have huge triceps. So it, this doesn't work for me. So how do we marry the two together? Overhead work did zero for my long head. In fact, the majority, my long head is disproportionately larger than my overhead to my tricep. And I've always just done flat pressing. So how do we marry the two together? Because that doesn't work for me. It's not my reality. So next, I think this is where, where the solution is, where the answer is to marry together both points of view. I think body types hold the cue. Body types hold the clue, in my opinion, okay? Your body type is what determines how useful overhead work is for you. I think possibly the best discussion that I've seen on this in recent times has been Alex from Alpha Destiny because he at least touched on body types. Now, he's an intelligent guy, and it pleased me greatly to see him discuss body types because I feel that's the missing link. So, and I want to explain that a little bit more and you can go over to Alex's channel and, and check out his explanation. But um, from my perspective, for a long armed, short torso lifter, who is likely to be more limb dominant, so more dominant in their legs, more dominant in their arms, and less torso dominant, I feel that any tricep work they do will heavily prioritize the arm because I'm a long limb lifter and I'm tricep dominant, I'm bicep dominant. Well, I'm, I'm mostly tricep dominant, just like I am quad dominant and hamstring dominant. I'm not torso dominant at all. I never have been, not even in my powerlifting days. Any time I extend the arm, whether that's for a press, whether it's for an extension, whether it's overhead or whatever, I will heavily utilize my arm to do that. Okay. And the long head is the largest muscle out of the three which compose of the tricep and which extend my arm. So anytime I'm doing a tricep extension movement, whether it's a press, an extension, overhead, whatever, my long head will be activated, will be strongly involved, which is evidence from my development after powerlifting. The long head is always going to be the most dominant pr pressing muscle for me because that is the way the bulk of my mass is on my arm. It's not going to be the smaller muscles. And if anything, if I'm doing a press, my triceps are gonna be heavily involved rather than my chest or my shoulders. I've always been a very delt tricep heavy presser, even when I was pressing four plates. So I've always been very heavy on the tricep. Now, conversely, for a short armed, long torso lifter, someone who's a lot more torso dominant than they are arm dominant, it becomes far more likely that when they're trying to isolate their triceps or in fact their biceps as well, it's far more likely that they will involve their chest, their delts and their upper back. So if they're close grip benching or weighted dipping, it's far more likely they'll involve their chest and shoulders. If they're doing upper back work, it's far more likely to be a pure upper back exercise rather than involving the biceps and the triceps. A close grip bench for a short arm lifter is a very different beast to a close grip bench for someone like me. When I'm doing a close grip bench, my triceps are being taken in through a very, very full range of motion because I've got longer arms. If you have a guy who's got a short, torso, short, thick barrel chest torso, he's not going to get the same range of motion on a close grip bench or on a weighted dip. In fact, every single tricep exercise he tries to do to isolate his arms is going to heavily involve other areas of his body, which he's not intending to build there. So like the chest, the shoulders, the lats. So the leverage, leverages dictate the arms. First of all, they're not gonna be taken through a full range of motion. And second of all, they are the type of body who's much more likely to have the chest influence a tricep exercise than somebody like myself where if even if I'm doing a bench press, it's heavily tricep dominant. 
and because it's tricep dominant and the long head is the largest muscle of the triceps, of course I'm going to get a lot of long head work no matter what I do. I don't need to do overhead work to target my triceps. It's not necessary. But for a guy who's got a short torso, um, for a guy who's got, sorry, a, a long torso, short um, sort of barrel chest, um, short limbs, they're probably going to need to completely take their, the influence of the chest and delts away from an exercise. So they probably will need to do overhead work just because they're so torso dominant and arms, arms kind of go along for the ride. So for them to effectively target their triceps, they may need to do the majority of the work overhead. That, I feel, is the missing link. That's the nuance that we're not seeing right now in this discussion. So I think people are getting carried away with the whole overhead work, where for more than likely a lot of people who are long-limbed, short-torsoed, it's unnecessary. And in fact, probably suboptimal, just because you can handle more weight with um, dips and skull crushes and close grip bench. And they've traditionally been great builders. So the answer is overhead work for shorter armed barrel chested lifters, I would say becomes almost mandatory, not because it places the tricep in a stretch position, but due to the removing of the chest, delts, and upper back in the movement. Because anytime you work the triceps, the long head is the largest tricep muscle group. That's the thing. It's always, as long as you're targeting the triceps, the long head is going to get worked. The overhead work is not effective because it targets the long head. It's effective because it removes the majority of other muscles out of play. That's the missing link. And in the same way, we're, we missed that nuance when it came to frequency and muscle protein synthesis. We're missing this nuance. It's not that overhead work, well, it's not exclusively that overhead work puts you in a stretch position. It's more that overhead work takes away the involvement of a lot of other muscles, which would normally be involved if you did a dip, a close grip bench, skull crusher, all of which are traditionally good tricep builders, but have your arms by your side, which means you're much more likely to involve the chest and delts in the movement, particularly if you're a short-armed torso-dominant lifter. That's the answer. I'm 100% sure that's it because, yeah, that... That sort of current push, it just doesn't match my experience. So, concluding thoughts. I feel like the other side of the debate needs to be aired here, and this is what I'm presenting. As the community as a whole can get very carried away with ideas. Ideas which originate in science, which do work for a lot of people, which don't match a lot of people's experience, mine included. In the end, I feel that nuance and knowing yourself wins over everything. And in this video, I've just wanted to push back a little bit against this seemingly sort of runaway train of ideas, which I feel like I was in that scene from Zoolander where he's like, am I taking crazy pills? Like, everybody's talking about overhead work for triceps and, and dropping other things. I'm like, hold on a second. That's not what built the biggest arms of all time. That's not what built my arms. So there has to be another reason. We have to be able to marry the two, we must be missing something. And that is what we're missing. We're missing body types. We're missing involvement of other muscles. It's, it might have some, um, something to do with it, putting the tricep in a stretch position. Sure, stretch position is useful. But I certainly don't think that's the full picture. I think it's far more likely that overhead work allows a torso dominant lifter to exclude or to more exclude the chest and shoulder delts from the movement. That's the key. And so for a long arm lift lifter like me, I gain nothing from overhead work. I get the same from overhead work, from overhead extension work, as I literally do from close grip benches. So let me know what you think about that. Um, but um, it's my pushback against uh, the current focus of the community. All right. Peace out.